pace exercise physiology. Today I'm going to talk about diabetes and how it's influenced by exercise. What we're going to run through before we start is just a, a quick lesson in the metabolism of type 2 diabetes. So everything we eat ends up in our stomach, which is broken down into fats, proteins, glucose or sugars. And on top of that we obviously have our vitamins, minerals, fibre and water also. The bloodstream being our transport system for our body. So everything that we have in our stomach needs to move through there. Our proteins are responsible for repair and regrowth of the body, so we don't focus on them too much. What we're going to look at today are our glucose molecules and our fats. And our fats are our lipids, we're just going to draw a small circles, just like when you have a salad dressing and you can see the lipids in the lining there. And our glucose are a lot larger. So they make their way into their bloodstream and how quickly they come into the bloodstream depends on the glycemic index. So if we have a, a sugary food, 100% of the sugars from the stomach will be there in 2 hours. If we have a lower GI with a value of 50, 50% 50 of those molecules will be there in 2 hours. So it's a lot easier for our body to deal with. Our fats make our way into the bloodstream from the tummy also. And what we see is with our blood glucose charts after a meal, is that our blood glucose levels will rise as the glucose comes from the stomach into the bloodstream and as that happens, our body releases a hormone called insulin which we draw as a key. If insulin does its job correctly, it binds with the glucose and it takes the glucose into our muscle cell which is responsible for clearing 70-90% to 90 of the glucose in our body. What happens in type 2 diabetes is that our body becomes insulin resistant. So as our blood glucose levels rise, our body continues to release insulin, but it's not recognised in doing its job properly. So we've drawn it as a key. In type 2 diabetes, the key doesn't quite fit the lock. So our body continues to release more insulin as our blood glucose levels continue to rise until it finally does its job and brings our blood glucose levels back down. So from our bloodstream into the muscle cell. The other place where our free fatty acids or our lipids come from besides our stomach is our waist girth. So if we have an increased waist girth, those fats are more likely to be deposited into the bloodstream on a day-to-day -day basis. So with the increased lipids in the blood, it means that we have more insulin resistance or insulin insensitivity, which causes higher blood glucose readings. What we want to achieve by exercising is better managing our blood glucose levels, so we reduce our risk of things like heart disease, stroke, blindness, kidney damage, nerve damage and amputation. When we exercise we have um, acute changes and chronic changes. Our acute or short term changes are that we burn up or use some of these free fatty acids which means that the insulin and the glucose can bind together better to take the glucose into the muscle. The other short term change that we see is that our muscle becomes hungrier for the glucose as it burns it up so it causes an insulin free glucose uptake. Our acute changes typically last for 24 to 72 hours or 1 to 3 days. So if you are going to exercise to see these improvements, they need to be done on most days of the week. The best long term change that we see if we include some resistance exercise in our program is that we actually increase our amount of lean muscle. As we increase our lean muscle, it gives more places for our glucose molecules to go. So there's more homes for those blood sugars to go from the bloodstream to the muscle. We also see other benefits such as increased bone and mineral density, so preventing falls and osteoporosis. At PACE we design specific exercise programs to help patients achieve these goals to better control their blood glucose levels, cholesterol, blood pressure, prevent heart disease and stroke. We look at identifying barriers to exercise and work through creating enablers so people can achieve a level of exercise necessary to prevent the side effects of type 2 diabetes. For further information, please contact us at PACE.